today's video, let's take a look at how to create a super dynamic car chasing with the destructions in Unreal Engine. The main system we're going to use is the destructible cars in the Matrix demo. I'm sure you have played with it in the gameplay mode. I've always wanted to use it in an action sequence and throw in some very dynamic cameras to see how far I can push it on the realism side. In general, we're going to use the controllers to create a car animation, record it, and then run the destruction simulation on top of the pre-recorded cars. I made a short video before on how to get more precise control using controller's analog input when driving chaos vehicles. Check it out, it offers much more granular control on the speed and the steering. Now let's get to the main part of the video. The destructible cars are runtime triggered out of the box, meaning they work when you play the level. However, if we try to record the car directly and play back, the destructions are not triggered. So how can we use a pre-recorded animation to drive the car trajectory or transform and then trigger the car destructions when we render the sequence? Let's start by taking a quick look at the structure of the sandbox car blueprint setup. There are multiple components in play, and I don't know exactly which part does what. But on a high level, you can see the whole car motion is driven by a skeletal mesh. Each wheel is its own isolated static mesh, and then parent to the car skeleton at runtime. You can check out this video released by Epic on exactly the detailed breakdown of the car setup. And when we look at the animation recorded on the skeletal mesh, you can see the wheels are moving, and the global position is directly recorded to the transform track. And also, in the blueprint, there are a couple different subskeletons that drives the destruction under the main SKM. With this setup, if we can make sure the car keeps the recorded transform and the pre-recorded wheel animation from the clip, and let the subskeleton system do the thing when we render or simulate, that should be it, right? Let's do a quick test. Not exactly. You can tell the car shell is reading its transform track from the pre-recorded clip, but the wheels stay in place and seems to be still running off some sort of a physical animation. Now let's try turning off the physics simulation on the main skeleton and then let the sequencer drive them. Boom, that's what we wanted. Simulation only happens on the body destructible frame and other properties are driven by the pre-recorded sequence. With this setup, you should be able to art direct the timing and the movement of the car while leveraging the uh, destruction system. With the R&D is done, let's try to create a dynamic shot. First, let's record the car animation and its performance. I haven't found a way to record and drive two cars at the same time, so if you know a trick, I'd love to know. For now, I'll drive one car at a time with the controller's analog input. First is the flip car. I built a little ramp for the car to fly. It's looking pretty good. Now let's bring out the second car. I try to run the second car as close as I can for the first car, and then run into the first car when it reached the ramp. And don't worry too much about getting the exact motion during the recording. This workflow allows us to add extra motion tweaks in the layers after. So let's just try to get the basic beats in there. Then we'll bring out the camera car. Normally in the live action, the camera is mounted on a car driving with the stunt cars as well to get the natural feeling of the speed and weight. So let's try to do the same here. Make sure the camera car doesn't drive as crazy as the other ones. And we don't really have to get the camera car timing at the same time. We can always shift the clips later on. Then let's put a camera to the car. You can either attach it to the front or the back. Once the camera is attached to the car, you can add another adjustment layer to tweak the framing to capture the most interesting motion over the sequence. I will add a little bit of a more camera shake as well. There should be already some motion from the car driving and recording. Um, sometimes I would add a little bit of high frequency but low amplitude shake to mimic the car going over a bump or going over the gravels. 
Once the sequence is in a good spot, let's convert the car to possessable. I found that the spawnable car sometimes will get lost when you hit the render button um, and possessable seems to be working fine so far. One of the best thing about this workflow is that if you're not happy with the specific performance of the hero car, you can simply add an adjustment layer in the sequencer to tweak it and the simulation will still run properly, uh, which means that you can really take your time and get everything just the way you want it. Another thing I discovered is that when the level starts or when you render, the two cars will get snapped or teleported into their starting position. And because the simulation is already running, the destruction will happen even before the shot starts. And this can be fixed by simply adding the sequencer file into the level and turn on autoplay. So when the level starts, when you render, the animation will play automatically from their actual starting position to avoid the uh, teleportation. If you want to spice things up even more, you can place more cars in the scene and let the hero cars run through them. And since the animation and the trajectory is driven by the sequencer, they won't slow down and they will just force their way through the obstacles. But just be careful, sometimes you might get a little too much destructions happening. Well, I did this demo in an empty and clean scene just for demonstration purpose. But when you actually creating the shot, you might want to either record the car animation directly in the city level or in, in the level you're actually gonna render. Or you might want to extract the road geo from the main level into a proxy level so you can uh, do your car stunts in a, a cleaner setup rather than running the whole city simulation every time. Okay, so that's all the steps of creating that dynamic shots. However, there are a couple caveats that I want to mention with this workflow. First, it seems that you have to work inside the matrix project for all the uh, car destruction system to work properly. Another thing is that you can really record all the destructions into a sequence. You can record the uh, car frame deformation or some of the uh, body animations, but the particles, the broken glasses, all the debris won't go into the sequence. It's just too much happening. So if you want to use this workflow for uh, shot production, um, you almost want to treat it as a live action, set up the car trajectory, set up the timing, set up the camera, and run the level, run the simulation, let the physics take over. And you might have to render 10, 20 times to get one take that you like. Okay, that's all I have you for today. I hope you found this workflow useful and you can use it in your project. If you have any questions, leave a comment and let me know. Also, if you want to share with me what you created with this workflow, feel free to drop me a link, leave anything in the comments. And I'm working on something really cool and hopefully I can drop it in the later this month. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, I'll see you next time.